This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this chapter, we're going to put all of the lessons we've learned previously to work, and we're going to build a cell phone design. For this first lesson, we're going to look at how to bring in an underlay sketch of a design, and then we'll build our curves and surfaces over that sketch. So the first thing I'm going to do is start a new document. So I'll click on the new document icon. And I do want to make sure that we select small objects and millimeters. Millimeters is kind of the standard unit for this type of product design. And a cell phone would be considered a small object. And if you read the notes over here, this template file is for building objects the size of a truck or smaller. So a cell phone would certainly qualify for that. Let's go ahead and click open. The screen flicks. And now we have our four viewports. We're going to work primarily in the top viewport at first here. So let's go ahead and expand the top viewport by double clicking on it. Now we have the expanded top viewport. So the first thing we'll do is bring in the sketch that we're going to use for reference. To do that, you can just go up to the top viewport menu. And this is true of any viewport that you'll be working in. I'll click on the down arrow. Then we'll go down here to background bitmap. I'll select place. And then wherever you have your sample files, we're going to go into chapter 12. And I'll click on the phone underlay file. Go ahead and click open. Now that I've done that, Rhino is asking me for a little bit more information before it can place the file. The first thing it wants to know is the first corner. And this is going to be the lower left corner of your illustration. So for now, I'm just going to type a zero and hit enter. And that'll place it at my world axis. And I'm just going to drag it up a little bit and then click. We're going to reposition this and resize it so it doesn't matter what size it is right now. So once I've done that, you can see we have our object. But as you can see, the grid is kind of covering this up a little bit. So in order to hide the grid, we can just press the F7 key on our keyboard, and that hides it. So as I zoom in, you see we have a pencil drawing of the front view of a cell phone. So the next thing we're going to do is get this to the right size. And you can see the command line knows I've placed a background bitmap and that I'll probably need to do some more work to it. So it asks me right away in the command line what options I'd like to apply to this. And the first thing I'll choose is scale. So it wants an origin point. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to click right here on the bottom edge of the phone. Now I'll hold my shift key down and I'm going to drag up to the top here and I'll click. Now by doing that, Rhino knows the distance between those two clicks. And I can just type a number now and it'll scale the objects to that number. So if this is say 50 millimeters tall, if I type 150, it'll scale this sketch proportionately until that length now becomes a 150 millimeters. So we need this phone to be 116 millimeters tall. So I'll just type 116 and hit enter. Now it wants to know what direction I want that. I'm just going to hold down shift again and drag up and click. So now we've scaled this and it's 115 millimeters. Rhino is assuming that we may have some more editing to do to the size or position of this sketch. And in this instance, it's correct. So we want to move this so that the center of this sketch is now aligned to our zero zero plane. Again, that's going to make it easier to apply any symmetry we want to this sketch. If we draw in curves, we only have to draw the one side of a curve and then mirror it over. So I'm going to press Move and a point to move from. Now, when I drew this sketch, I actually drew a center line on here. So I can zoom in, and I'm going to click right on the center point. The thing to know with a sketch, you're never going to be 100% accurate because the more you zoom in, the bitmap starts to sort of fall apart. So it's always a little bit of a guess, but we're going to really zoom in here before we click for our center. So if we are off at all, it's going to be less than a millimeter on either side. So I'll go ahead and click. Now it wants me to select the point to move to. I'll just type 0 and hit Enter. And then I have to zoom out a little bit. So now let's move this portion of the sketch to the zero, 0 line. And you can also see it still has some other options. Right now it's set to grayscale. I can switch that off, but it won't change a whole lot because this was just a black and white sketch. If you're working over a photograph, the photograph will come in by default as a grayscale image. And by switching that, if it was a color image, 
it'll switch back to a color image for you. Now just a tip, if you are drawing something or bringing something in, it can be a little overpowering to work over. So what I did with this sketch is rather than use a heavy black line, I actually lightened the lines so that they're sort of a medium dark gray. And this way when I'm drawing my curves, I'll be able to see what I'm actually doing. If you had solid black lines here, it would be a little more difficult to see what you're drawing, especially if your curve color ends up being black. So as it stands now, it looks like we're okay. Everything's good. I can just hit enter to apply all the editing and scaling we've done to this bitmap and to exit the command. So now we have our bitmap in location, all ready to go. A couple of things I'm gonna do before we get on to drawing the body curves, and that's just to create some curves that I'll use as a reference point. So under my curve menu, I'm gonna select this icon here, which is a line from a midpoint. And I'm gonna come down, and because I know this crosshair is right at the world zero, zero, I'll just type the number zero and hit enter. And then I'll just hold my shift key, and I'm gonna draw a line that extends beyond the cell phone. Now I know I've got a line that's directly down the center of this phone, and I can really kind of concentrate on one side of the phone and mirror everything over. I'll do the same thing for a horizontal line, although that line won't be nearly as critical. This time I can just snap right to that midpoint because the line I'm drawing does draw in both directions, as you can see. So I know the midpoint is gonna also equal the zero, zero world. So I'll click on those. I'll select both of these lines and I'm gonna go ahead and lock them. To do that, I'll use the quick key, which is Control L. So now I've locked those lines. I have my bitmap all scaled and ready to go. Let's go ahead and save this project. I'll just click on the save icon. I'll come out, I'll go to chapter 12, and I'll just save this and call this Rob's cell phone. Now we have the file all saved. And that concludes this look at bringing in a background image and editing it to get it ready to use as an underlay.